were just on our way across the Barlow Road and we saw this festival going on and we decided to stop and play for you a bit. Uh, we're, heart, we're heart steerings. We're from Tualatin, Oregon, um, not too long ago from the Detroit area of Michigan, but like most smart people, we emigrated here about three years ago. <laughs> and we're going to play um, some old time tunes for you. Most of them date from the period of the Barlow Road and the Oregon Trail. Um, a couple of them are a little bit off on the timeline, but in the same flavor. So we're going to start out with a medley of three French Canadian tunes. As those of you who know very much about Oregon history know, a lot of the early settlers here were of French Canadian origins and they brought their music with them. One thing that's characteristic of the music of the Oregon Trail is that there's no one set of music that is indigenous to the Oregon Trail. People, the emigrants came from all over the country and all over the world and they brought their own music with them. So we'll start out with three French Canadian tunes, La Best String, St. Anne's Reel, and mouth of the Tobique.
of you are sitting there thinking, what the heck is that thing she's playing on? It's called a hammered dulcimer. It originated in the Middle East in biblical times. People often associate it with Appalachian music or Celtic music, at least in this country, but it does not have either one of those origins. There is another instrument called a mountain dulcimer or a lap, lap dulcimer or an Appalachian dulcimer, which is like a long skinny guitar. You lay it on your lap and it's got frets and you play it with a pick, and that's a lap dulcimer. But the only thing they have in common, two things, they have strings on them, well, three things. They're made out of wood, they have strings on them, and the word dulcimer means sweet sound, and I think they both have a very sweet sound, although they're very different. And I'm sure most of you know what this is, a good 1960s K upright bass. <laughs> uh, next, we're going to play a tune that was popular around the time of the Oregon Trail. It's called Liza Jane. but I saw somebody walking over to the table as if they might have wanted to buy a CD or pick up a card. <laughs> We've got a CD coming out in about two weeks. As the, All those things take a lot longer than you expect, but the CD is going to be called Heartstrings at Oregon Historical Sites. And we're going to, we've done this kind of in collaboration with four of the historical sites around here, the end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center, the Shampooey District, the Aurora Colony, and the Philip Foster Farm. And there's a write-up on, uh, on each of these sites on the CD in the little insert. And so not only will it be nice music, but it'll be educational. If for some reason you might happen to want to buy one of these, or hire us to play for a party or some other event, I've got some cards down here, so please... Feel free to take one, and I'll stop yakking and play some more music. Um, the next one I'm sure you're all familiar with. It comes from the time of the Oregon Trail, although it didn't originate around here. Uh, Stephen, Stephen Foster's O oh Susanna, which probably a lot of people were singing as they went across the trail. dulcimer is it's so versatile you can realize you can see we can really bang the heck out of it and get some good loud music going 
or it can sound more harp-like. And I often play in hospitals and hospice and nursing homes. And um, what I do, other than playing a different kind of music, is I flip my hammers around. Uh, I was, I've been playing, there's two sides to the hammers. One has a wood side, one has a leather side. So now we're going to play an old English folk tune called the Ash Grove. Some of you may be familiar with it as a hymn tune. I'm going to flip my, ham, flip my hammers around and play with the leather side, and you'll see the difference in the sound. which is very much in the character of the old-fashioned music. The tunes were written, well, two of the three tunes were written by Cal Scott, who is a local composer. He's based out of Lake Oswego near Portland. And he has written music for many historical productions in this area. The next three tunes are from the um, program that's given at the end of the Oregon Trail Interpretive Center in Oregon City. If you ever have a chance to see it, it's well worth your time, both from a musical standpoint and from a historical standpoint. Uh, the first tune of the medley is called Bound for the Promised Land. Uh, when the people took off across the trail, they really did feel that they were bound for the promised land. And this is an old hymn tune. It's not actually a Cal Scott tune. The second is called One More River to Cross, and this is a, a Cal Scott tune. Uh, they had lots of rivers to cross as they came across the country, and when they started out, they were all excited, and oh boy, we got one more river to cross. We're just going to get going here and cross as many as we can. Uh, the third tune is called McLaughlin's Reel, named for John McLaughlin, the father of Oregon. And it can, he was of Irish, Scottish, French Canadian, kind of a mixture, descent. And you can hear echoes of the Irish music in the tune. You can also hear a bit of a Native American influence, which kind of blends, blends the times of, of McLaughlin's life, which is what Cal Scott had in mind. Then there will be a reprise of One More River in a very different character, it wasn't so much fun to cross the rivers after several people had died and you'd been on the trail for three months and you were all tired out. And so it seemed a little different to you to be crossing the rivers when you got out this way. And I hope you enjoy the medley.
along the trail. They certainly wouldn't have put one of those in the wagon. They wouldn't have had room for anything else. <laughs> um, a lot of the immigrants across the trail were of Irish or Scottish descent, so we'd like to play a couple of Celtic tunes, Irish tunes. The first is called Red-Haired Boy, and the second is Cold Frosty Morn. across the trail was the time of the Civil War and they would probably bring some of the Civil War tunes along with them. We have a medley of three of those. The first is called Bonnie Blue Flag. It's a southern tune. Uh, the second you may recognize, especially if your hair is about the same color as mine, you may remember hearing this from back when they had the Civil War Centennial back in the 60s and hearing Tending Tonight and it was one of the most beautiful th songs I thought I'd ever heard. And the third is a rousing union tune called the Battle Cry of Freedom.
couple of, we'll slow down the tempo again, play a couple of tunes, one of which I'm sure you'll know, the other you probably won't. Uh, the first is Shenandoah, which is one of the most classic folk tunes that there is in this country. And the second is actually a contemporary tune uh, by a composer named Bill Staines, and it has gorgeous words, but you don't want to hear me sing, but it also has a gorgeous melody, and it's just called River. the tempo. This is a tune that dates from before the time of Lewis and Clark and it was sung on the, by the boatmen coming out here on the rivers and it's called the Boatman Dance.
We'll play another pretty one. This is called January Waltz, and it was actually written by a contemporary hammer dulcimer player that we knew back in Michigan. Her name is Judy Morningstar, but we think that the character of the tune fits well with a historical performance. They usually end their dances with a waltz, so we'd like to play January Waltz. dance tunes. This one's called Cherokee Shuffle. I think you may recognize both of these. First is an old Irish tune that was brought over here and came to be known as The Girl I Left Behind Me. And the next the one we're going to medley with it is a little after Oregon Trail time, around the turn of the century probably. Um, Red Wing, those of you who probably know Red Wing, and I think around the time of the, the union organiz organizing, the union organizers put some union words to it and called it Union Girl or Union, union Maid. So you'll recognize the tune.
mom singing that when I was a little girl, and I didn't realize at the time I'd be up here playing it on a hammer dulcimer, but I am. We have time for maybe a couple more. Uh, I think I'll play another Irish tune for you. It's called John Ryan's Polka, uh, probably contemporary with the Oregon Trail time. goes back a long ways. But my understanding, even though I'm probably the only person on earth who never saw this movie, it was featured in the movie Titanic, and it was the tune that the, uh, Irish were, the Irish were sailing over in the hold because they had no money. They were dancing to this tune while the rich people were dancing waltzes up in the ballroom. This is John Ryan's Polka. the next group can set up. I want to thank our sound guy, Tony, over here. Thank you very much. We couldn't, certainly couldn't have done it without him. And I also noticed a gentleman out in, the, out in the audience there. He's got kind of a tan color shirt on. And if you stop back at his booth in the back, he and a colleague have some Native American flutes. And if you want to hear what the music was really like on the Oregon Trail, then you should go back and play a visit to him. We'll end with Fisher's Horn Part. 